Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to share the squash painting that I did from a reference photo from the Food Paint Challenge over on Instagram. I really enjoy doing those uh, reference photos, painting from them, just because it is usually things that I never would think of painting myself, so it just kind of gives you a different, um, a different source of inspiration, something you wouldn't normally do. I'm starting off in my large Arches Paper watercolor sketchbook. This was made by my friend Rosie. She's Artsy Rosie on Etsy, if you'd like to check out her sketchbooks and buy one. Um, and I'm just sketching on with a brown watercolor pencil. This is one of the Spectrum Noir, uh, I think they're called like Aqua Blend watercolor pencils. And the reason I'm sketching on with this is because I want the uh, I want the colors just to kind of fade away and, and blend in. And also I think that this brown tone would look really nice with the kind of old fashioned glass ketchup bottle and the mustard container. I think that would look really nice as they start to get dissolved and blend in. I recently purchased a set of 12 Shinhan gouache colors from Amazon. I paid about $50 for the set and I really wanted to try this brand of gouache but I didn't know of any sellers that I or normally order from that had individual tubes so I figured this set of 12 would be great basic uh, colors to try out and um, I just put them in a little makeup palette. So a tip that I have for you if you wear makeup or you know somebody that wears makeup is to ask for like their old eyeshadow palettes as they're like using them up or getting rid of them and then you can just scrape out any remaining eyeshadow and wash it with soap and water and let it dry and then you have a beautiful little shallow palette anytime you want to test out some colors or you want to make a little travel palette or you want to share paint with a friend they're really handy to have around so um, if I'm cleaning up my makeup box or the, my daughters are I just snag those palettes to wash out and use for this purpose. I'm adding quite a bit of water to the gouache here. I'm mixing some burnt umber or no burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, making kind of like different shades of brown, blues, grays, and I'm using that for the background. I think that kind of desaturated background will um, give it a, a make the um, the ketchup and mustard bottles kind of stand out, but also keep that vintage vibe that I want. Plus, I love the look of painterly brush strokes in the background of a painting. So that's another reason I wanted to do that. And I, I think that's really pretty. I like also keeping it kind of a square format because I'm going to share this on Instagram and um, as part of the challenge. And that's kind of part of the fun, I think, with these Instagram art challenges is that um, it's it's such a like it's such a wholesome thing. It's like people aren't making money off these. We're all just like sharing reference photos and sharing our artwork and cheering each other on. And it's fun to see what other people did and how other people interpreted the reference photo. Because a lot of time the reference photo is nothing to like, and I'm not disparaging the reference photo, but it's nothing to write home about. It's nothing that you would be like, oh, that's so beautiful. I have to paint it. It's usually something that you wouldn't really think twice about if it was sitting out on your own counter. But I, I think part of the community and part of seeing what other people are doing and it forces you to, um, kind of find art out of the ordinary and I think that's what I really like about it it's, and it's very wholesome it's very non-monetized and just um Oh, it's just good. It's just good. I highly recommend it if you enjoy uh, being on Instagram. I am like the world's worst like Instagram uh, creator. I My channel's, my page is not very big, but I enjoy it. And I think that you gotta have something out there that you just kind of use and enjoy, not just try to, um, you know, I guess, become popular on, if that makes sense. I do enjoy using Instagram, but I only follow art accounts. So whenever I turn it on, I'm just seeing pretty paintings and pretty crafts and things like that. So you can make it how you want it. And that's what I do. I don't follow like my friends on there. I follow my friends on Facebook. I don't follow them on Instagram because I'm looking for like art inspiration and whatnot. Um, I found these paints really easy to work with. Now, this is just my first painting with them. I've done some color mixing studies and whatnot. Um, so I feel like I do need to do a couple more paintings before I do a review on this paint, but so far so good. Um, it's pretty affordable. We figure 12 tubes for about $50. That's um, $4 and something per tube. I think that's pretty pretty reasonable. Um, it's actually just a little over $4 a tube, I think. They do have larger sets, but something I find with gouache is I much more enjoy it when I have a limited palette and like the Holbein set of five that I've been recommending. And if you have the Holbein set of five, the nice thing about that is that none of these colors are the same as the Holbein set of five. The yellow in the Holbein set of five is actually cooler than the, the coolest yellow in this set. And the magenta is cooler than the cooler red in this set. And the uh, cyan in the Holbein set is kind of in between the uh, the two blues there, but it's much more intense. So um, if you have the Holbein set, this is going to be a nice 
a nice complement to it. Of course, you'd have an extra white, which everyone can use an extra white, and then you'd have an extra black, which I don't use the blacks too much, but I think that it might be really handy to just use the black and, and do some like value studies with that. But I, I just, I don't tend to reach for black too often in any brand of paint. But I can always use it to prime papers for use with pastel or something like that. So it's not it's not a total um, uh, a total waste or anything, uh, especially for the overall price of the set. I think it's I think it's fine if you have an extra like duplicate of a color or something. I wish it was a yellow ochre in this set though. I would definitely trade the black for a yellow ochre. Um, that burnt sienna is quite red as well, so you may prefer to have like a um, a burnt umber or actually you could probably mix the black and the burnt sienna and get something a little bit more of like a burnt umber. So. So what I'm doing here is basically I'm looking at the um, the subject more like blocks of color and value versus looking at kind of the details and whatnot. So I'm trying to get the weight of the bottles. I'm trying to get the chunks of color. I'm trying to get the um, a texture of the surface, like the matte plastic of the mustard jar and the glossy. Uh, sides of the glass ketchup container, um, the metal of the lid. I'm just trying to get those um, those blocky subjects down, I'm trying to get the weight in, trying to get the color in. And I, I like this look in gouache. I like this kind of um, painterly, chunky look. And I want to get some of that red from the ketchup bottle bouncing off of the yellow from the the ketchup, the um, mustard container rather. I like to see how colors interact with each other. Sometimes I'll zoom in and really take a good look at like a, a color or a shadow, uh, really make sure I'm getting the gist of it. But I'm not going for something super detailed. This whole painting took me around 40 minutes, so just over half an hour to paint. And it was a lot of fun. I, and I tried to stop the gouache paintings before I overwork them too much. The greens, you know what? If I had my druthers, I would get rid of that really bright light green there and I would replace that with yellow ochre because you, it's easy to make a sap green from this. It's easy, you know, you can mix any color you want with this set, I believe. Um, it's, you know, it's got some good versatility. That purple is actually a manganese violet, which is kind of interesting for a gouache set. That's a color I love in watercolor because it granulates and it's texture, but I find it kind of odd um, for a gouache set, but this is definitely like your crayon box colors you have here, which makes it versatile for mixing. Um, I'm really going to be interested in doing some more little paintings with this set before I review it to make sure that it is as versatile as um, as it seems from the get-go, but uh, but so far so, so good. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Um, I also am a big believer in using a limited palette, so even if you do have a large selection of colors, only using, you know, five or so at the most to make sure you have harmony. So the green that I that I made there, I used the ultramarine blue and the yellow that I had used on the in the ketchup, um, the mustard bottle. So it ended up matching, and it looks definitely looks green enough. It looks green enough for this the 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 saturation and the color range of this. Now I was putting those highlights in there and I'm like, wow, those are just way too bright. They looked almost plasticky and artificial. So I'm going to have to tone those down a bit. And I toned them down by making some kind of like orangey colors and kind of going over there because we have those colors in the landscape here already in our scene. Um, it's going to be, it's going to look more natural to tamp them down with that color and then um, just save those bright white sparkles for the end. There's still the highlights on the the opening of the ketchup bottle are too much and I'm going to have to deal with those. Um, you've got to look and see where your brightest whites are. The brightest whites are going to be the highlight on the cap, that label on the neck of the bottle, and the, and the the end of the ketchup bottle is catching a lot of light on that white label and that's really bright there too. So, you know, you don't want everything to sparkle in a in a scene like this because you want to have um, a little bit more I don't know if realism is really the right word, but you want to kind of accurately assign those colors and values. You want to get that weight. You want to get that that feeling of this, like this is just sitting on a countertop, maybe at a diner, maybe in a um, in a house, and you've got that you know warm light streaming in through the through the window. It kind of looks like um, like morning sunlight to me. I'm thinking, okay, this is just laid down on a diner on a diner counter or a diner table 
somebody's just had maybe an omelet or some scrambled eggs and they wanted some ketchup or some home fries, you know, so that's just kind of sitting there. It's just that little, that little inkling of light. And the white highlight that's on the jar, actually it was supposed to be light passing through the ketchup bottle, but when I look back at it, I'm like, that looks like a reflection for the cap that's sitting on the table. So I kind of like that, even though that's not what I painted at the time, that's what my mind interpreted later. And I'm like, that works, that works. So when I'm doing gouache, I do the fat over lean rule, kind of like you would with oil painting. So I'll start my first layers will be very watery very thin and as I build up I'll use more opaque layers and thicker layers but I never want to get too thick with the gouache because it can flake off your paper especially where paper is flexible you're turning the pages you don't want to have a really thick passage like you don't want it to be visually bumping off the paper because that's where you're going to get cracking and that's where you're going to have issues with your um, with your painting holding up but as long as you work fat over lean and you don't get too thick with your um, uh, with your paint, it's going to be fine. So here I'm using a small brush and some watery down a paint that's still thicker than what I had in the background to sign my name. But then I was thinking, oh, you know what? I think I need a little bit more dark on that ketchup bottle. And I zoomed in to see the values and the details a little bit better. And I want to paint that little hinge on the flip top um, of that, the, the cover there, and just kind of get a little bit more detail. And sometimes they do that. Um, I don't think when you sign your name, it absolutely has to be the end of the painting. Uh, but I, I went in and I just kind of refined some darks, added in some more darks on, on the yellow because there was some darker areas that I didn't go dark enough with. And, um, and just kind of also add, added some more stronger shadows because I felt like I was a little too wimpy with the shadows. And shadows can be hard to see on yellow, to be fair, but um, but there, that's, what, that's how I left it. I think it looks really cute and I'm really happy with how it came out and I enjoyed using this paint. So stay tuned for a review. I'm going to use it a bit more till I do that. And uh, till next time, happy crafting.